Prakriti, Karan, Sayyam. The fourth one is a little obvious, so I'm not going to put too much uh, time into it, but it's Rashi. Rashi is basically the quantity of food that you take. I mean, that is obvious. The amount of portions that you should eat should be... Lesser. Uh, I mean, it doesn't have to be low. lesser, but it has to be in sync with what you can digest, yeah. essentially, and what your requirements are. So that is Rashi. Again, I'm not getting into that detail because that is fairly self-explanatory. The next one is uh, Desh. Prakriti Karan Sayyog Rashi Desh. Right. So next one is Desh. Desh I will spend the maximum of my time on. Because this is why I feel that most of these nutritionists and dietitians have no clue what they are talking about. And no disrespect to them. I know a lot of them. They are all great individuals. It's just that they have not been taught. Not them. Again. Um, let's let's take a relatable example. Okay? What does Desh mean? Desh means uh, your geographical location. Okay. And when we are talking about Desh, we are normally talking about not more of weather conditions because they change, but more of climatic conditions because they are very fairly constant for the particular area. Um, let's take a very relatable example. We'll take India. Let's uh, because we're in, we live in the West. So let's take Western India as an example. Okay. So we we'll start. We we'll start from the north and we we'll start moving towards the equator. We we'll start moving towards south. Okay. And we we'll start just 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 observing what kind of diets happen. So let's start with um, Punjab. Mm -hmm. So what kind of food is there in Punjab? A lot of makke ki roti. Makke ki rotis and sarso da saag. You heard of all of it. They do a lot of good also. A lot of good. All yummy food, you know. Yeah. I love the Punjabi food. A lot of food. buttermilk, uh, ghee, lassi. Butter, lassi. Right. So you have a lot of makke ki roti, sarso da saag. Now let me ask you a very simple question. Makke ki roti is extremely heavy to digest. Am I correct? Yes, absolutely. Heavy to digest. And yet you'll realize that people in Punjab are able to digest this. Okay. Let's move a little down south. Let's start moving towards Rajasthan. Right? The next one. So what kind of a diet is there in Rajasthan? It's more to do with lal mas so much in Rajasthan they have. Okay. What else? They do have lal mas. They have a lot of jowar, bakri. The makke, the rotis, the sarso, the saag is now changed into the dal batis. Yeah. And so the funny thing is they don't put any ghee in the dal bati. Mm -hmm. They put the dal bati in the ghee. I mean, the amount, yeah. the yeah. amount of ghee they use yeah. is not, it's yeah. not funny. It's yum again, but you start realizing that they come from a very dry and arid climate. Yes. So the maximum amount of ghee that is used probably in the world is by no, people there. Yeah. It's because they need that lubrication because they live in a dry climate. Right? So the same guy in Bombay with a 90% humidity will say, Mar, what do you Lao ghee. But we'll count it. We'll count it. Yeah. Right. So they live in a dry climate. They need that amount of ghee. But you'll also realize that that food is also heavy to digest. I mean, the dal parties are not easy to digest. Yeah. No, yeah. And we started off with parothas, right? Mm. From uh, Punjab. Mm. We've come to rotis, but they're also not easy to digest. Yeah. Let's move down south a little. Mm. We'll go to Gujarat. Mm. Right. So you'll find the rotis become a little patla. Mm. But overall, the the tone of the food is a little sweet. Hmm. Right? Yes. Because sweet again is a little heavy to digest. Yeah. But it's still there. You're still able to digest all of these things. You're no longer having the makkas. You're on wheat now. Hmm. Right? But the overall tone is a little sweet. Move down a little south to where we are, Maharashtra. Right? In Maharashtra, what kind of food is there? It's still, still the same, the rotis. You don't have the makkas here. Natchni. Yeah. Correct. You'll have a little natchni. Oh. It's really easy to digest things. But you'll find the overtone becomes a little spicy. Hmm. Right, like if you look at a typical Maharashtrian food, it's a little spicy. Mm -hmm. In fact, even within Maharashtra, when you go down south towards Kolhapur, you start finding that the spice, spice levels start increasing. increasing. Correct, and that's not so much in the Konkan area. Yeah. So you start relating all of these. Not spoken it in the Konkan area. Spoken it in the Konkan area, okay, again, it grows there. But also, um, you start realizing that spice levels will increase. In the Konkan areas, it won't be so spicy. Right, it'll be still a little sour, you'll have a little kokum, you'll have a little this. But the spice levels start increasing as you move south. And the digestive capacity starts reducing as you're moving south. Mm -hmm. Because you started with makkeri roti and the parothas and now there are patli rotis. And spice, because spice increases the agni, the digestive fire. Yeah. Right? Now, you're in Maharashtra. Let's ignore Goa, it's too small. Let's move on to Karnataka. Right? So what kind of a diet do you find there? More rice. More rice, correct. A lot of black pepper. Mm -hmm. 
cooking more rice so you start finding that you had makka then it was wheat hmm. then it was patla roti wala wheat hmm. and now wheat is also not digestible hmm. so now it's even more easy to digest meals like rice based meals mm-hmm. right so you are realizing all of this right when we go down south to kerala you will actually start realizing that even rice is difficult to digest in kerala mm-hmm. so if you ever been to a traditional proper keralian restaurant i don't know what they call it in malayali but in ayurveda in sanskrit it's called shadang pani there's a red color water that is served to you yes you see isn't it yeah right so that helps you digest that rice as well yeah. things are very curry formed and a lot of spices included especially black pepper because that helps, helps in digestion correct so what we have observed from the makka to rice being difficult to digest is that as you move towards the equator or essentially as you grow more tropical your digestive capacity is reduced mm-hmm. right so your diet also needs to change now if a punjabi has been living in tiruvannamalai for 5 years and said mai to punjabi hu lao makke di roti sarso da saag what do you think is going to happen to that person in the jashu precisely what do you think will happen to the marwadi who comes to a 95% 90% humidity climate of bombay and says you need i need more ghee obesity you need to realize and i can guarantee you you go to a dietitian you know how they work a nutritionist you keep a piece of banana in front of you of any food mm-hmm. proteins carbohydrates minerals fats vitamins this vitamin that phosphorus calcium red potassium x y z that's why they call nutritionist because they are focused on nutrition yeah. so they will look at the nutritive values of all of these things they don't know what it mixes with yeah. right they don't know whether it's digestible or not yeah. sure. okay kya wo pachega they don't know makka has so much nutrition great ab tiruvananthapuram you have to take it yeah. now in germany freiburg there's a test done that raw salads are very good for you mm. now ethiopian should eat it mm. even though you are next to the equator in a tr- because it was proved scientifically proved that two magical words <laughs> because now that those magical words have been attached because they were tested in germany yeah now ethiopians must have salads every day they must another simple uh, i can go on and on you know no, 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 it's, it's so stupid because when you really actually think about it What it makes so much sense on avocado because we've had a lovely conversation on this in the past <laughs> and we have got a lot of lot of uh, people telling me because i said hmm. definitely eat avocado but hmm. when you go down to mexico don't have the avocados that are coming to india because they've traveled a huge i always feel that we should have things that are grown locally having said that i don't my think point. it's a big problem if you are able to digest see understand my whole point the greater point that i'm trying to make is a diet is a tug of war between digestion and nutrition where digestion has to take priority over nutrition because if you have the best nutritive things and if they are not digestible you're not getting anything except toxins absolutely you're well messing said. your body so the diet is basically just a tug of war between digestion and nutrition and you have to first ensure that the digestion part is covered before you move on to the nutrition part and this is fundamentally where all of these guys fail mm-hmm. because they don't understand digestion they literally think digestion happens because of some bacteria in the gut and they don't understand how digestion actually works they have been pumping probiotics for them the entire life they have been pumping antibiotics so they need those probiotics it doesn't work like that true true right so this is again one of the points yeah one of the points in ayurveda is this. that is this okay okay so now we have covered we start again let's do a recap for prakriti prakriti karan karan sayo rashi and desh yeah. okay so uh, i think there was one more point i'm forgetting that i wanted to make i think if i remember it i'll circle back to it and i need more brahmi for myself right now uh, i mean said that uh, the next point is kal so when we look at kal we're looking at two different kals right we're looking at kal in, so kal is time essentially yeah. right so we're looking at time in terms of the person's age so uh, we again have to you know tailor the entire diet according to the person's age because a young kid cannot or one year old cannot have the same diet as a 20 year old right mm-hmm. uh so the second call is because in desh we are talking about climatic conditions which stay constant you know uh, in a particular place but the weather keeps changing mm-hmm. so we have to have a diet according to weather condition you cannot have the same things 
that you have in winters in the summers. I mean, it doesn't work like that. What you're having in the monsoon cannot be copied and had in the autumn or mm-hmm. in the spring for that matter. So, what is that one thing that you would say we should have when we have Mumbai monsoons? Okay, so that we can, uh, I'll come to that. Okay. Right? So, when we talk about Kal, no, there is one, something in Ayurveda which we call as Rutucharya. Yeah. Rutucharya is basically what kind of a regimen, what kind of a diet, what kind of lifestyle you should follow according to every season. And then in between the seasons, there's a 15 day Rutu Sandhi, which is, which is where seasons change and people fall sick because there's something very specific you need to do in every Rutu Sandhi. And when you don't do that, the chances of you falling sick is higher because the immune system is optimized. Right. right. So it's very simple. These things you can actually observe on your own body. And you'll realize all these things make sense. Sure. Right. So, um, again, uh, Ritu Sandhi and Ritu Charya is what we normally have to understand. You know, coming to the question of what should we do currently in the monsoons. So, monsoons is when Vata increases to the maximum. So, you'll have patients who will have either neurological diseases that will increase at this time. Or people who just have a gas, gas and a lot of acid reflux, a lot of GERD, a lot of breathing discomfort. A lot of sleep uh, problems, Insomnia. a lot of insecurities, anxieties, nervousness, fear, palpitation, depressions. Because these are essentially Vata problems. Right? Okay. So you'll have all these Vata problems increasing. You'll have people who have black discolorations of the skin coming in right now. Um, and again, I can keep going on and on, but let me just stop the list right now. But Vata problems increase in this time. And the simplest thing to counter the Vata problems is to avoid things that are very drying in nature. Okay. Dry food. So don't have these powders. Don't have all these sukha nashta. So I know people have these ajwain and these methi and all these powders. You know, just stop. Not in this season. Okay. In this season, you lubricate your body. You counter the vata. Right? Also, what do you lubricate it with? Do you lubricate it with something that is cooling or something that is a little hot? Mm-hmm. Hot. Hot. Because vata is very cooling in nature. So you don't use coconut oil. You would rather use till oil, sesame oil, or mustard oil. Right. Yeah, mustard is a little more hotter, but if your body is very kafaish or very vatish, then you can probably go get away with it. Okay. Right? So then again, you need to follow a diet, you need to follow a lifestyle, you need to <clears throat> you need to give respect to Kal. And you need to understand how you need to live with it. Again, this is a very vague example. I mean, it's very specific when we come to exactly what we need to do. But I don't want to give very specific examples because everyone I don't want them to just follow it because then Prakriti and all also have to be taken into account. Imagine a Pitta person starts having a massage with a mustard oil problem. <laughs> I mean, yeah. that's an entire other problem on by themselves. So again, I, I, I consciously trying to refrain from not answering that question and yet trying to answer that yeah. question. Yeah. Okay, so it's, it's a little of me walking on the razor bench. Uh, diplomacy. Uh, diplomacy, but I'm, yeah, I'm trying to just uh, look out for the people who are listening to this conversation. I don't want them to fall sick on my accord. I don't want that karma to come on to me. Uh, having said that... Uh, and and let's come down to the most important thing, Doc, that a lot of our disease component is coming from our food, right? So, most of our lifestyle diseases, most of uh, how we feel on an everyday basis can be changed with how we eat on an everyday basis, right? I mean, but nobody is focusing on the anam. In the Anamaya Kosha, people really, they eat today, people are not eating for nutrition value. They're eating for taste. They're eating for hunger. I mean, they're eating at whatever time of the day. So, Kal ka to koi bhi respect nahi ho hai. People are eating at 2 and 3 with Swiggy and Zomato delivering at that time. So, nobody's following the circadian rhythm. There's there's really no, every everything that you're talking about is in every way, being completely nullified and broken and that's why you we get to see so much of disease but do you think if we apply these ayurveda principles that you're talking about putting in all these six seven things that you've said and the others that you want to say how much of it is actually doable we are well well into our mid-age we've lived our life and we are bearing the consequences of how we've lived in our 20s and 30s is how we live in our 70s 40s and 50s but the kids of today how many of them are actually following the circadian rhythm? How many of them are listening to any of these things that you're saying? So how can we make this a little more easier and get them to follow? Because we have a whole generation of young Indians who are going to take on the world. And if they're going to be with lifestyle disease. So, of course, we have with us a 
great uh, proponent on mental health she'll be talking to us about because there is a great relation between mental health and what a person's consuming and eating our next conversation is on that but how can we make this all easy and not make it too heavy and complicated what is a simple thing that we can tell that these five points you stick to and you will stay away from lifestyle disease um i think there are a lot of questions here yeah. i'd like to start by answering the by answering a lot of them but i think a lot of answers might come by the time that we end this entire thing you know nitika when you were born you were three kilos i guess yeah. you were three and a half kilos yeah. and today that you've grown into such a uh, you know Old such woman. a big <laughs> <laughs> you're like the media you're putting words in the mouth <laughs> now but now that you've grown into such a big tall uh, girl and i don't mean it in the cosmetic sense i it says that what has gone into your system that has made you this big from 3 kilos that you've gone into becoming a full sized adult the only thing you've done is you've consumed food yeah and you've had water yeah right so whatever has gone into you is made you absolutely and your cells constantly die and new cells are being formed yes. so there is a soft reset that happens there is a hard reset that happens where your tissues will keep changing your cells will keep changing whatever you consume eventually makes what you are yeah and it doesn't just make what you are physically it also makes it what you are mentally allopathic science i can't trust because since the 1970s they said the body and the mind have no relation today they're coming and telling me 76% of all diseases are yeah. psychosomatic so if my grandfather believed allopathy he would have been an idiot and if you believe in allopathy then your grandkids will call you an idiot i mean i don't understand yeah because it's it's, it's, it's so much it's it's in such big flux i'm sure we're in a better place than what you were in the 1970s true but i still can't guarantee that we're in the place where we need to be true so all of these things are human experimentations where you will you've been experimented on if they're succeeding that's fine if not succeeding what can you do about it right i believe we should stick to what is tried and tested mm-hmm. yeah we have a lot of other pathies that are coming in that are mimicking ayurveda in many ways like naturopathy like another pathy that try to mimic ayurveda in a lot of ways and because they don't call itself ayurveda and don't associate with india then they become a little more acceptable because we are all somehow uh, in this uh, secular mood a lot of these times so we don't understand the science for its science we look at the finger as look pointing towards the sign mm-hmm. and the finger is crooked then the sign is supposed to be crooked mm-hmm. so this is what is happening what i'm seeing that is the first answer to the question the second answer is you're trying to get out of me a shortcut which kids can follow and which kids can implement that is easy for them to maintain a good this thing i believe there is no such shortcut and people who are trying to find such shortcut will end, end up in vain there is no shortcut to taking care of your body mm-hmm. there is no shortcut to understanding your body mm-hmm. and there is no shortcut to uh, to following it with discipline mm-hmm. discipline cannot bring shortcuts nowadays kids that i'm finding really love to have instantaneous grat- you know gratification instantaneous gratification and they need results quickly i feel that is very concerning not just in the health sphere but in every sphere yes if you don't have patience if you don't have discipline you could have been born in the 1600s or in the 2300s which is 300 years in the future you will suffer modern technology has advanced so much and all of that has been founded in our head biologically not one thing is changed absolutely you still take 9 months to get that baby you like it or not you could have any microsoft google chips in your body nothing will change so all of this technology technology that has been set in your brain i have had a patient right now who said i'm just waiting for some new technology to cure my son i said you're crazy what are you waiting for in the biological sphere all of these technologies just sound good on paper the only thing you can do is instead of a human hand you can have a robotic hand cutting you that's it mm-hmm. so much technology what has changed in your biology tell me one thing that's changed in your biology only things that are extraordinary can be put you could put a better quality rod in your hand if your hand breaks yeah that's it you could put a better quality teeth if your teeth break mm-hmm. external what biological functional changes can happen well we're moving towards we we're talking of regenerative biology where we're talking of growing stem cells and growing i know there's been teeth grown in hamsters so we're looking at it that probably there been a heart there been hearts grown in pigs yeah in terms of stem cell research yeah or what we call as oge yeah yeah that is uh, pluripotent and totipotent there are two types of oge in the body 
So you can extract the OH and you can do that. So as I said, in terms of surgical aspects, you are okay. Yeah. But in terms of conservative treatment or medical treatment, there is nothing. The, because the whole focus, anyway, we are shifting from the diet aspect. We could talk about this. The whole focus, in fact, you look at uh, Hutchinson's book on uh, medicine. You will find that literally right is conserving and preserving you until nature comes and cures. Yeah. And what if nature doesn't cure? Let's say diabetes, nature doesn't cure, you take medicines for life. Thyroid, nature doesn't cure, you take medicines for life. All allopathic medicines are mere symptomatic suppressants until nature comes and cures. Yeah. You think your crocin is or paracetamol is curing your fever? No, it's just... doing nothing of the sort. You think a painkiller is curing your inflammation? It's yeah. doing nothing of the sort. Yeah. All it does is just gives you relief until nature comes and cures. Relief. Everything is symptomatic relief. Right? Because they don't go to the root, they don't bother. Today I have a patient, as I said last time also, I have given the same example. Uh, who is not, who is not, you know, the way they, the way the whole system is made is to just fool you. Today a patient comes and tells you, I will give a very simple example. That he has, he, let's say he, he has insomnia. He goes to a doctor and says, doctor, why do I have insomnia? You know what the doctor tells him? Take less than 0 0.2. No, no. Okay, fair enough. That's the solution. But I'll give you a, a little more vivid answer. He'll say that, you know what, melatonin is not being produced chemically in your brain. And which is why you're having this kind of a problem. So solution is, let's take melatonin that is externally produced. And when you take it, you'll feel, you'll fall asleep easily. The patient takes it, fall, falls asleep easily. Did he actually answer the question of why am I not getting sleep? Or did he answer the question of how am I not getting sleep? Did he tell you the cause? Or did, you, did he tell you the process? He told you the process. such a bad thing that 
thing for the human consumption? Absolutely not. The problem is not gluten. The problem is our capacity to digest gluten. Yeah. As I said, we're in Maharashtra. Here we have beef. South you can't. Yeah. It becomes a problem. A few people can. Most people can't. So, so you have to realize that, again, diet is digestion, then nutrition. If it there was, because most people don't understand digestion. So I always kid around with my uh, nutritionist friend. That why do we even grow food? We should just have rocks. They have the maximum amount of minerals and nutrients you want. <laughs> just break up a rock and eat it. Because anyways, you guys don't look at digestion. You will give a person saying, Yeh khao, itna protein khao, itna protein khao. Aray, dekho, is he able to digest that protein? Yeah. You anyways don't look at it. And so you might as well feed rocks. No, the, you're solving the whole world's health uh, food <laughs> crisis. You don't need to grow food. You don't need farmers. You go to the mountains and start eating soil. It's not palatable. It's simple. Okay. <laughs> okay, now, now we are digressing. <laughs> we are moving to so, okay. rocks. Prakriti, Karan, Sanyog, Rashi, Desh, Kal. The next one, again in Kal, I forgot to mention time of the day. Now that yeah. is also very important. Where you need to eat at a particular time of the day. Because you, you, your gastric juices are being produced at one particular time of the day. And that needs to be uh, pretty constant daily if you want the best results. You can't just have lunch at 11 a.m. and then 3 a.m. and then, sorry, 11 a.m., 3 p.m. and then the next day at 1 p.m. and then. It needs to be very disciplined. Yes, food should be disciplined. Food should be disciplined, not just what you take, but when you take it. And how you take it also, right? Uh, you should yeah. sit and eat rather than. And that is when the next point is. So <laughs> that is upyokta. Uh, upyokta is just what you're allergic to and what is suitable to you. And upyok sansta is then how you consume your food. Yeah. So, it has to be a little warm. It shouldn't be cold food. Yeah. Uh, Ushnam, Snigzam. It has to be a little lubricated. It shouldn't be very dry, very difficult to swallow. Mm-hmm. Matravat, which means that everything has to be... The, achar cannot be like a sabzi and a sabzi cannot be like an achar. Yeah. Right? So, like Matravat. Portion the portions of every individual things also have to be correct. And in Ayurveda, we say that food has to be shad rasatmak. Which means all six rasas. Whether it is sweet, salt, salty, sour, astringent, uh, bitter or pungent. All of these things need to be incorporated in your food in the right balance according to the prakriti and according to your vikruti, which is your current problem that you may have. Right? So that has to be there. So Ushnam Snigdam Matravat, then Nati Drutam Nati Vilambitam, which means it should not be had very quickly, neither should it be had very slowly. Now, these seem very basic, but yet I'm seeing in the study people just eat like that, and some people just watch TV and they just enjoy their meal for an hour, hour and a half. It's ridiculous. How are you going to expect it to be digested? Right? Also, in, when it comes to quantity, in the Rashi point, I would have wanted to add this, is in Ayurveda, the ideal way to have food is you should have food until half your stomach is full. One food should be filled with liquids like either a dal or something that you've taken with your food, you just a little bit of water. And ha- one food should be empty and that gives proper churning. And a lot of people also make the mistake that they think water should not be taken during their meals. In Ayurveda, it is clearly mentioned Water should be had along with your meals. Half a glass to one glass of water. Or it could be chas or it could be solkadi or it could be from wherever you mm-hmm. come. Right? You always find that a thali and some liquid is served to you. Yeah. That so is that is tradition. fine, right? So that this, should be done. There was a new trend that water should be had half an hour before food. Thank, thank Times and, of India for this. Because yeah. they anyways yeah. contradict yeah. themselves every two months. Yeah. But they have to give new grab, you know, new yeah, food. New thing. Something, some new yeah. trend. Yes, yeah, so suddenly because they were saying that water kind of uh, neutralizes the di- digestive juices if you're e- mm-hmm. having it along with your food. So you shouldn't keep your water glass. Mm-hmm. And no, so that's absolute bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you should always have water along with your meals in a sipping, sipping fashion. Yeah. Right? You should not eat too fast. You should not eat too slow. Yeah. Well, everything that I'm saying, no, I can quote from Charak Sahita, the founder of Ayurveda. Yeah. So and there's nothing that I have made up here. Absolutely. I'm simply a parrot. Yeah. I'm just simply memorizing those things in you know, taking all that credit after speaking with you. Having said that, uh, so anyway, so Upyok Sansta, is you should also eat without laughing or without talking and with full concentration. It's very important. That your attitude. You're, you're concentrating on your meal. You know, you're chewing it well. All of these, the mastication process has to be proper. All of these things is very important. So that is Upyok Sansta. So yeah, I think I've covered in very, very small brief. Everything has of, been very, very informative. And I think um, it'll make us relook at. I think everything is being done right, wrong. You know, like point one to point nine that you covered. Everything yeah. has been very blatantly. We are really, you know, it's like we are inviting disease. We are inviting 
some kind of a issue or problem with us. And I always say this that it's not it's not what you know the ease of today is that you have a medicine to relieve every symptom right away. Just the fact I that I love we, the I love that you use the word relieve and not cure. Yeah, of course. Of course we know this, right? To relieve the symptom and the the way antacids are being prescribed left, right and center. You know what antacids are? If you have two minutes, I'll talk on antacids. Yeah. I, I love this. Okay. So let's talk about antacids because acidity is something that I have a lot of patients of acidity and that's a very common. That I think every house has someone who's <laughs> suffering from indigestion yeah. or acidity. So yeah. I'll give you a simple understanding. Okay. So most of the patients that come to me with acidity, they should be doing it to hear us. I have a three minute, six minute video, I think on YouTube explaining this, but I'll do it there. So, your body is producing some sort of an acid. Yeah. This acid is responsible for digesting food. Yes. I'll keep it very simple. Yeah. Let's call this good acid. Hmm. Okay. This is responsible for breaking down our food mm -hmm. and digesting it. Good. Very simple. Mm -hmm. Now, whenever you have an indigestion and whenever something is lying in the body, it ferments. Right. So, whenever something ferments, it's acidic. So, let's call that bad acid. Yeah. Because that acid is never going to help you digest food. Mm -hmm. Very simple. Mm -hmm. Now, what essentially happens is that the overall acid level increases in the body because you already have the good acid that has been produced and the fermented part that is in digestion because of either wrong food choice or, or, eating too much or over eating being cleared out or staying hungry for a long time yeah. and then suddenly eating mm -hmm. whatever is you have some indigestion everyone has it in their life that causes bad acid and good acid so the overall acidity level is above what your body can take mm -hmm. hence you have acidity mm -hmm. very simple mm -hmm. so now what do people do the first thing they will do is they'll have thanda pani or thanda meat. Hmm. That is the first go-to. Hmm. Or they'll have the ice creams, the vanilla ice creams. Hmm, ice creams, ah, yes. This, these, these are the first go-tos. Hmm. So what you're doing here is you're giving more dairy in things that are khadda. Very simple. Uh, what water. happens when you put khadda things in milk? Mm -hmm. Fermented okay. things in milk. You take, chalo, you take something fermented. You take dahi and put it in milk. Hmm. What will happen in the wine? Precisely. So the more acid is produced. Huh. Clear? Yeah. Let's move on. And the second thing they do, or let's say the second thing I forgot, was they have a lot of water. They hmm. drink a lot of water, like hmm. cut, 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 hmm. you know, like like fish. Hmm. Now what will happen is that you've really diluted all your digestive Fire. fluids. Hmm. And now when you eat food, that is again going to be not digested very well. Yeah. And that will again lead to where we started off with indigestion. Okay. The second thing people do is they will dilute their acid. I mean, they will, uh, they will uh, dilute their acid with water. They will neutralize their acid. So they'll have these enos, the digenes, the whatnots, mm. right? Fudinara. The Fudinharas and all of that. Mm. Or the whole shabai. What happens there is that eno doesn't know that it has to dilute, that it, it has to neutralize the bad acid. Mm. It neutralizes everything. Mm. It is so good. Che second. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, now that you've neutralized everything, you have no acid to digest your food. So now that you eat, it's again going to cause indigestion, which will again cause acidity. You're back to square one. Yeah. Okay. Now the next line of treatment is, is you take, uh, what else? Okay. The blend, the antac and the panties and the omes and all of that. You know what or they do? empty stomach. First thing. First thing. That's great. So we know what happens when you do that. What it does, it stops the production of good acid. Mm -hmm. You know what it does? It stops the production of good acid. So there is no good acid being produced in order to digest your next meal. Mm -hmm. So which is why you've seen people who've been on this for life. Jem mm -hmm. One pandi every morning. Two pandis. One omes. Because you're never solving the problem. You're just relieving it for the next meal. Yeah. So aram, 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 karte jao. And ilaji kofi aja no corner. Yeah. All you had to do was simply bite the bullet. Take something that would digest the meal for you, clear the system up, and you'll never need to take any what of this, this for the rest of the day. something? It depends. You can simply take dry ginger powder. Take one or two spoons every day. Let your acidity increase for a while. Fan karo. Thoda din takli ka, but you'll digest all your food. Hmm. Once the indigestion goes away, you're done. Okay. Problem solved. Never take it for life. Okay, but this is the thing, crux here now, Doc. Is kisi ko sehen kuch karna nahi hai. Everybody wants snap at the finger ilaj. you got a symptom it should be relieved in the next 20 minutes max as i say right to suffer you have a right to suffer please suffer yeah. so who can is... stop you if someone wants to jump from a building who can stop them 
you can stop them for a while but how can you stop them if you want to stab yourself in the stomach despite knowing all this and despite being an intelligent person because nowadays dumbing yourself down is a new in thing <laughs> right so if you want to dumb yourself down then why should i make the effort to stop you but if you want help you yeah. want to know all the things then we will always stand with you because that is our dharma yeah and dharma doesn't mean religion it means duty absolutely so you had some very interesting conversation with dr manan who's broken down myths and also spoken to us about ahar vihar achar vichar and next time we will talk on vyavahar doctor <laughs> so thank you so much for lighting up the room and the conversation with you know completely myth busting uh, conversation and um, it's always such a pleasure to have you at uh, studio a- aesthetic and we will have you back for some more very very interesting conversation sure, thank you sure it's a pleasure thank you for having me thank you thank you, thank you.